your name, O oh Lord, in spirit and in truth and in praise and thanksgiving for all that you've done for us, O oh Heavenly Father, in sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins, that we might have that right to the tree of life. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, this morning and again that you have allowed us to come and worship you. Lord, I pray right now that you'd hide this, your servant, behind the cross, that those who are here may see thee and not me. That your word will go forth with soul-cleansing, life-saving power. That if anyone under the sound of my weak voice has not confessed Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, that today that you will draw them through and by your Holy Spirit to be a part of your church, your church universal, that we'll, we will change this world through the uncompromising word of God, and we will let your word stand as final authority in all that we do and all that we say. Bless now, Heavenly Father, as I speak unto these thy people, I ask it in the name of Christ, our Lord. Amen. It's good to be once again in the house of the Lord, and it's good to be to see all of your smiling faces this morning. I am so grateful to God for his goodness and for his mercy, how he has guided us through the process of this week, and that, you know, with all the snow and everything that we have seen, uh, it's amazing to me we get all these nice little warm days that's warming up now. And I don't know whether y'all noticed it or not, but these trees are budding around here. Did y'all notice it coming up? God is so good, isn't he? Uh, that, 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 that's something. I, I, I just thank God that he's in control of that. And we are not because um, God is just so awesome in everything that he does. I want to uh, correct an announcement. In the, in the bulletin, there is the announcement concerning the military support group, and that number is wrong, the phone number that is given there. And if you would like the correct number, if you want to be a part of that ministry or participate, just uh, contact the office, and we will correct that in the announcements next week. And if you want to just write it down. The correct one is 615-781-2813. Uh, so if you want to correct that right now and you want to be a part of that ministry, just uh, write that down, please, and we will give you the correct information if you call the office. wanted to uh, talk to you this morning about um, uh, Psalm 27, that's where we're going to put in. And I've asked our media ministry up there to find something because sometimes in the reading of the Word of God and the different translations that are given in the Word of God, that there, there are different um, uh, um, statements that are made. New King James is a good Bible, but I always keep my King James handy. I, 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 uh, because sometimes this has a better um, statement, I think. And, and uh, I, I like the clarity, don't get me wrong, of the New International Translation. The Living Bible is good, but it's just too liberal. It goes way out there for me on some things, and I just can't go along with some of the statements that it makes. Um, uh, the New Living Translation is good, but uh, the foundation, you gotta go back to your King James. You really do uh, to get a good understanding. I, I'm glad to see our honorary member, uh, Jeremy Kane here this morning, uh, candidate for mayor. We're praying for you, Jeremy, I promise you we are. Um, and it's good to see you here. Uh, I want you to see something. The faith that this man, the psalmist, and I believe it is written by David, but the faith that he has in God. The New Testament, when we get over there and we know everything that is written of old is the foundation that we build off of in the New Testament. Christ said he did not come to destroy the law nor the prophets, but he came to fulfill. 
And what he did when he came, he fulfilled to the letter of the law everything that the law stated. Now, you can't appreciate that unless you go back and you start to read Levitical law. You can't appreciate what he delivered us from under unless you go letter by letter through the book of Leviticus and you begin to read what the law actually stated. And you cannot truly appreciate your salvation to the, I, I mean, as to where you just grasp on and dig in and really thank God for his goodness and his mercy, unless you get into a true serious study of God's word. And it requires that of us. And I'm not criticizing anybody who is not. I pray that God will instill into you that idea to study his word that way and to really dig in deep uh, as to where there are times in which you just realize just from the fact of just your study how good God actually is. It was something for him to send his son. Yes, it was more than something for him to send his son. And a man who was uh, uh, without sin, a man who came to just fulfill the law and then to die, that we might be covered by his blood. And see, the beauty part of this thing is that when God sees you and me, he sees us as the righteousness of God in Christ. That's the way he views us. We would not in our own righteousness because the Bible tells us all of our righteousness is as filthy rags, but he sees us when he sees you and me when he sees us trying, when he sees us trying to do the right thing and trying to live the right way and trying to be the persons, and that is not in and of ourselves, that is the Holy Spirit that has taken up residence inside of each one of our lives. See, because just like Paul said, inside of my flesh, it don't dwell any good thing. That nothing that is good dwells inside of this fleshly person. I am just as evil, I'm just as low down as that person out there who has not professed Christ. But thank God for his grace. Thank God for his Holy Spirit. Thank God that there has been a change in my life. And so, therefore, what you see now is not me, but the righteousness of God in me through and by Jesus Christ our Lord. Always remember that. Don't think you that good. You're not. None of you are. You weren't born that. You were born that way. You were conceived in sin and shapen in iniquity. That's who you, we are. But thank God for Jesus and thank God that when Jesus died and he ascended back, he promised us some. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. He said, I'm going to send the comfort. That's going to be the Holy Spirit. He said, and he's going to dwell in you and with you, and he's going to give you guidance. But I want you to see something this morning. The New Testament tells us uh, um, Faith is the substance of things hoped for. That's over in uh, Hebrews 11th chapter, I think, verse 1. Uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And I want to just leap out and help us to build the foundation of faith this morning. All right? Psalm 27. That's what we're going to put in. And I want to read it in its entirety first, and then I want to go back and just point out a few things. I'm going to read from the New uh, King James. It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Uh, it says, though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, he says, in this 
I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. He said, now, my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. He says, therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I'm going to sing. Yes, I'm going to sing praises to the Lord. He says, hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will see. He says, do not hide your face from me, nor turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me, nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my mother and my father forsake me, the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me into the will of my adversary, for false witness have risen up against me. And such as breathe out violence. He says, I would have lost heart unless... I believe that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Y'all ready? You got the King James up there, and I want y'all to see that because some of y'all got all type of translations. Some of y'all got the King James that's sitting out there. But I want you to go back to that verse, verse 13. Put it up there, please. See what it says. I had fainted unless I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The King, New King James, what did it say? I'd have lost heart. That don't get it. Put that back up there. Don't take it down yet. Thank you, media. I lost heart. I had fainted. What is he saying? If it hadn't been for the Lord, if my faith had not been planted solid, if I could not have trusted in God, if I had not had the faith to dig in deep, I'd have thrown in the towel. I've been asked questions before. Some of you who are sitting out there, some of you who are back here, some of you who are even in the pulpit, Pastor, why is it that it seems like when I strive to live for God, why is it that when it seems like the more I pray, it seems like that person that lives next door or that person that is on my job, they get the promotion, I don't. They're prospering, I'm not. They are getting the things that seem to be, and I said, first of all, you don't know how they got it. 
that's the first thing. You don't, you don't know how they got what they got. You don't know how, what they're doing to maintain what they've got. And the Bible teaches me something. It's another psalm, and it tells me, and, and, and I'll never forget it, fret not thyself because of evildoers, nor be envious against the workers of iniquity, because they're going to be cut off. It tells me they'll soon be cut off. Look at what the psalmist is saying here. And let's go back just for a moment and evaluate a few of these verses. We got a little bit of time, and I want you all to see the goodness of God. The Lord is my light. He is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I don't fear what mankind can do uh, against me. I don't fear what the problems are of this life. I have security in knowing that I'm resting in the arms of Jesus. I have security. I sleep well at night. You hear me? I sleep well because I know that when I lay my head down and after I thank God for another day, after I've done all I could do to do right during the course of the day, and even though when I did wrong and I didn't know it, I asked God before I lay my head down for forgiveness for the sin that could have been omission, that I did not realize that I sinned in that way, I ask God for forgiveness. That's the first thing I do. And I thank him for that day's journey. I thank him for placing the people in my path during the course of that day that I was able to minister to in a very special way. I thank him for the guidance and the protection that he gave to me during the course of that way, that day. There are people who are dying every day. There are those who are out there on the highways and the byways and they get taken out. And somehow, some way, he allowed me to make it one more day. God's good. What was it, two weeks ago, Reverend Harris on his job, doing his job, get ready to go through a red light, and somebody tries to take him out. But God protected him. God brought him. He had a testimony as to what God did. He could have taken his life, but God spared him one more day. God's good that way. There are times in our life, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Look at the goodness and how we must dig in to our faith. He even says, when the wicked, when my enemies came against me, when they came up and those who had aligned with the enemy, they came to take me out. That's what eat up my flesh me. They came to destroy me. It says they stumbled and fell. God took care of the battle. You didn't even know the battle was going on. All you knew is somebody had it in for you. But God didn't allow him to take you out. Though an army <laughs> And he gets even more explicit and instructive here. As he said, even though if it's an army of people, if they encamp, if they build an army against me, he says, I'm not going to be afraid of that army. He says, the war could, could rise against me from that army that's encamped out there. He said, I'm going to be confident. Confident that you're going to take care of me through this. He says, one thing I've desired of the Lord, and he said, that's what I'm going to seek after. He said that I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Now, that don't mean here. That don't mean a building. I don't care how many tabernacles, I don't care how many temples, I don't care how many churches that are built or synagogues that are erected. He's not talking about a building. See, the, uh, uh, the, uh, 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 look, at, look, look again. One, uh, I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord. Where is the house of the Lord? Let me tell you where it's at. It's in your heart. 
heart. The house of the Lord can be wherever you are. The house of the Lord can become your workplace. The house of the Lord can become outside somewhere where you're just meditating upon the goodness of God. The house of the Lord is when you walk that walking trail and the trees are budding out and the flowers are blooming up out of the ground. It becomes the house of the Lord when I can meditate upon the word of the Lord. The house of God is where I can go to him in prayer. I can tell him about my problems and he'll do something about it. Where is your house of the Lord? House of the Lord when I can drive down the interstate and sometimes be all by myself and get happy just, just meditating upon God and his goodness. That's where the house of the Lord is. In the time of trouble, he's going to hide me in his tabernacle. He's going to hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place, he's going to hide me. And once that trouble is over, he's going to set me high up on a rock. He says, then my head can be lifted up. Above my enemies, all around me. He said, when I lift up my head, it's not in pride. It's in thanksgiving, and that's the reason I'm going to offer sacrifices. Sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing praises to his name. I'm going to get happy about what I'm singing about. It's going to dig deep into my soul. That's the reason why I evaluate songs when they're sang. There's some beautiful songs out. They've got some, some beautiful music that backs up some of these songs. But let me tell you, the song sometimes is not worth the paper it's written on because it's not theologically sound. I don't know, it, some of y'all don't, don't remember this song, but it was, it, it was a song put out years ago and it was talking about this man who had lived low down all of his life. And when you get to heaven, when you get to heaven, what you mean? You're gonna have a rusty old uh, crown, a secondhand robe filled with patches. That came out, y'all, that was a Christian song, y'all hear me? And everybody just clapping to the beat and saying, no, you ain't going to make it to heaven. The Bible teaches me, first of all, that there is nothing that rots or nothing that needs patching in heaven. That's the first thing to teach me. Rust, the Bible says, store up for your treasures where rust does not invade and rust out your treasure. So you're wrong in your assumption. You have to evaluate what's being said. You have to evaluate what's being saying, and you've got to apply that into the principles of the Word of God to see whether or not it stands up under the scrutiny of what God's Word actually has to say. And if it don't stand up, when in doubt, throw it out. Y'all remember that, okay? When in doubt, Throw it out. Get rid of it. It's not solid. You can't stand on it. You cannot stand upon that. What is solid is when you sing amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I know what I am. I know who I am. I know that, I, that, 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 that God had to do something that was outside of me in order to save me. He had to save me from my wicked self. And when he did that, it was amazing because it was an act purely of grace that was not of myself. Look a little bit, look, look, look a little bit further and I'm almost finished. Hear, O oh Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face I will seek. Hear, O Lord, when I cry. Have mercy upon me. Answer me. Yes, that is what I want God to do. I want him to hear when I cry. I want him to answer me, and then I want him 
to when when he says seek my face my heart responds yeah i'm going to seek your face god do not hide your face from me and do not turn your servant away in anger you've been my help do not leave me or forsake me O god of my salvation and he even goes as far as to say and some of us need to hear this when father and mother when they turn their backs, when brother or sister turn their backs, when best friend turn their backs and walk away and they forsake me, it says, then the Lord's going to take care of me. I've got confidence in knowing that even though they turn their backs and they walk away, God is going to take care of me. And after he says that, he says, teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me over into the will of my adversary. He said, because they've lied against, they lied on me. False witnesses have come up against me. And those who breathe out violence. And then he ends when he says, I would have fainted. I would have thrown in the towel. I would have given up unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And then for anybody in doubt, he says, wait. Waiting sometimes hard to do, ain't it? Waiting involves something, it involves patience. Wait on the Lord. Wait, what do you mean wait? Wait, it involves perseverance. You got to press your way through, but just wait on God. Don't try it on your own. Wait on the Lord. Be patient. Now, if you're not serious about this thing about patience, don't, 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 don't pray for it, Okay. Because the Bible teaches me something else. Doc, it tells me patience comes through tribulation. And in other words, if you want patience, expect trouble to come. Y'all understand? And you're wondering why all of this is breaking out around you and wondering why is that? Because God's trying to teach you something in the process. He's trying to teach you patience. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He's going to strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord and be of good courage. Don't, don't, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. You keep on trusting God even though you don't see the light of day on the other side. Your breakthrough is just ahead. Wait on the Lord. Don't, 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 don't you try it on your own. Don't try your own methods. Wait on the Lord. Again, I say, wait on the Lord. Plant your faith in him. Know that he hears you when you cry out to him. And please know, don't give up on God. He won't give up on you. He is able to keep you through all situations as far as life is concerned. Wait, I say, on the Lord. This morning, by letter, by Christian experience, by candidate for baptism, we invite you now to step out and trust God for all of what you're going through right now and watch how he delivers you out. As the choir is singing, the doors of the church are open to you. May we stand as the invitation is extended. Step out now, knowing he'll make a change in your life.